Hello lovely people, today we are talking technical. We are going to speak about secured socket layer, SSL. But first, a story. Once upon a time there lived a boy named Bablu with his mother named Nimi. Bablu's only job in the day was to fetch water from the local well for, for his mother. Nimi gave him a bucket that he has to carry water in. So every morning he would walk to the well, fill the bucket and walk back home. Unfortunately there were a lot of goons around and uh, they would disturb Bablu and they would kind of shake his bucket, make the water splash out. By the time Bablu reaches home, the bucket would be half full or half empty. Looking at that, Nimi would get angry and scold Bablu. Unfortunate, uh, Bablu couldn't, couldn't do anything and would just get scolding from his mother. Looking at this, mother had mercy and an idea came to being. One day she took the bucket to a local ironsmith and had a lid attached to it. Next day, Bablu took the bucket with the lid to the local well, filled the water and then locked the lid. While coming back home, he again found those goons who, was dis who were disturbing him, shaking his bucket and what not. But by the time he reached home, not a single drop of water had fallen out of bucket. Looking at this, Nimi was very happy and Bablu was excited. They were successful in getting a full bucket of water home and they live ever after happily. Story time over. So back in the day Netscape came up with certificates for its browser Netscape Navigator with which they would encrypt data when people were using Netscape Navigator and connecting with web resources. And later on IETF, Internet Engineering Task Force, uh, came up with uh, their own version of SSL and now we have a much advanced version of uh, SSL now being called as TLS, Transport Layer Security. Now before we go into understanding the whole concept of uh, SSL and how they encrypt data, we need to look at encryption algorithms uh, which are symmetric encryption and uh, asymmetric encryption. What you have is data and you have a password or a passphrase. So what you do is you encrypt your data with the passphrase and then send it over the internet to the receiver. And the receiver needs to understand the, the receiver needs to know the passphrase so you have to send the passphrase also and uh, the receiver receives the data, receiver receives the passphrase and uses the passphrase to decrypt the data. This is symmetric encryption. So there is another kind of uh, encryption algorithm and that's called as asymmetric algorithm, uh, asymmetric encryption algorithm and uh, what is used in that is it uses a key pair, a public key and a private key and before they could transfer data they do a little handshake and in that handshake what happens is they come to terms or they negotiate with each other about security and once the negotiation is done they kind of exchange their public keys so next and then they tr start transferring the data so when they transfer data from one point to the other point as they have already exchanged their public keys they can uh, encrypt the data as with the receivers public key and send it to the receiver when the receiver receives the data, it, ha it knows that it, is, it has been encrypted by his public key and he already has his own private key to decrypt the data. So we consider that as a more secured uh, method of encryption. So with today's version of SSL, it's kind of uh, taking best of both the worlds. So we'll look at the mechanism as how SSL works and we'll see how it is using um, asymmetric algorithm as well as symmetric algorithm to enhance the security that it provides. 
So when we talk about SSL, we need to understand what is it. SSL is basically a secured socket layer which provides a certificate and it kind of gives you a facility that when you are seeking data from a web browser, from a web server, then whatever data you are sending from your machine through your browser as a client, such as your name, your email address, your phone number, your IP address, all are important information. If while you're sending these information to the web server, your username and password as well to the web server, it goes in an encrypted scrambled form so that nobody can kind of intercept it and read that information in between. So you need to have a mechanism to encrypt that data and SSL provides that mechanism. So now we need to look at how SSL works. So as I said, SSL uses both of best of both the worlds, symmetric, uh, symmetric uh, encryption as well as asymmetric encryption. So it all takes place within the handshake. But before we go to handshake, we need to understand uh, what are the kinds of SSL certificates we have and uh, what are the type of uh, security it provides. So first, what are the types of SSL certificates and how do we recognize what kind, when we are uh, interacting with a web server, what kind of SSL certificate is being used. So let's say you are interacting to a bank website, any bank, your bank, you go to the, their bank's website and it'll look like something like this, a complete green bar with a padlock on it. That is EVSSL, Extended Validation SSL. And the other kind of SSL, you would go to any website with an HTTPS, you will only see a padlock and it look like something like this. So these are the two kinds of SSL certificates, secure socket layer certificates, EV, SSL and a regular one. Now we need to understand what are the type of security it provides. So SSL provides a unidirectional uh, security as well as it provides a bi-directional security. So when do we see a unidirectional security? Uh, it basically uh, when you as a client accessing a web resource such as Google HDFC anything through a browser That's when it is a unidirectional uh, Security and when you are uh, when you are configuring any application server that's going to interact with a web server That's when it needs a bi-directional uh, Encryption or bi-directional security when they have to talk to each other So in a typical world when uh, two human beings have to do a business they negotiate they handshake and these terms have been imbibed in technology as well. So when a client, a browser has to send and receive data from a web server, it has to do a introduction, a handshake and it needs to negotiate to come up with security terms. So well, let's explain about the steps that happens in SSL handshake. So what are the steps that are involved in SSL handshake? So first you need to understand your, you need to have a client and a web server. So let's take this as the client. This is, this could be a Google Chrome, a Firefox, Internet Explorer, or any other browser that you can think of. Let's call this guy the web server. Okay. Now what happens the, is the client sends a client hello to the web server. Now what are the information that the client is sending it's sending a hello which means it's first introduces itself itself and it also sends a list of cipher suites that the browser is gonna or the browser understands now at that time the server dude is going to respond back with a server hello and at this point it is kind of looking up into the list that the client has sent of the cyber suites I'm sorry cypher suites and then it will pick up the most relevant one and also along with that it will send its own public key so with this with a client uh, with the server hello the client receives the uh, cypher suites that they're going to use to interact with and they, this guy also receives the public key of the web resource now at this point what happens this dude the client would say I'm going to create a pre master key and encrypt it with your public key and then it will send that pre master key to the 
server dude now the sir and and it will ask the server that please read it and tell me if you are able to read it or not so the server will decrypt it with its own private key and then answer back saying that yes i have understood your pre-master key and hence a session establishes and then a session password is created now this session password once the session password is created that's when the actual data transfer starts happening and that's why i say the first mechanism is where they're using the asymmetric algorithm of security where they're sending the public key and then he's creating the master key uh, pre-master key which is being encrypted with the public key and sent back that's where it uses asymmetric and after that when they have established and they have exchanged the master key for the session it's called a session master key once that is uh, shared between these two then they are going to transfer the data using the session master key and then it starts happening as a symmetric algorithm because they're using one password or a passphrase a master key and the data is being encrypted using that and it is only going to be uh, living for that session so if you want to kind of and there will be a timeout period for it so once uh, that session expires you're going to establish another connection you have to go through the whole handshake again and then you have to generate a new session password so it kind of gives a better security to ssl uh, certificates and uh, that's how ssl handshake works and uh, i guess uh, that's how the security is provided when you are kind of transferring data uh, from your web browser to the web server now you would ask me a question saying what kind of data are being transferred from the web browser to the web server whereas shouldn't the server be sending the data of, of course the server should be sending the data but you are authenticating from the client you're sending your ip address you're sending your username you're sending your password you're sending your machine name you're sending your mac address you're sending a lot of information from your browser all this information needs to be encrypted so that nobody can intercept in between and that's why we need ssl security for that now while we have understood i hope you have understood it uh, the how ssl works at the same time we need to understand that the these certificates can be bought from certificate authorities and they are the most secured uh, certificates but uh, this is the era of DIY, right? Do it yourself. So a lot of people also generate self-signed certificates. Uh, please be uh, keep it in mind that self-signed certificates are only going to be used or should be used within a closed network, which is already protected, and you don't have a lot of computers interacting with each other because it's not secured. Period. Uh, even Google Chrome or any any third-party browser other than Internet Explorer would consider self-signed certificates as insecure even though they would say it's a self-signed certificate and it will give you a warning internet explorer sometimes trusts it gives you a green signal saying secured but it also tells you that it's a self-signed certificate so it's always good to kind of invest if you are having a web server and you're catering to customers and so uh, and users and you want to provide encryption you should go for a third party certificate there are a lot of vendors available in the market digisign very sign a lot of lot of uh, uh, vendors about 60 dollars to 100 dollars a year so go for the certificates and start providing uh, security to your users so i hope i was able to help you understand ssl uh, we'll meet again next week and uh, next week again it will be a technical topic i'm going to talk about blockchain see you all Till then, bye-bye.